My work is called People Are Cocoon Weavers, whether they know it or not. My piece uses all sorts of different materials that are synthetic and also natural. And the ideas behind it are kind of that we as humans, as people, create our own cocoons, but also each other's. I had three sections. Each section was about six to eight metres long. It took a very long time. I wrapped it all around my little brother. Then I put hoop iron around him. My um, exploration proposal was looking at change in metamorphosis. And so I'd been looking at butterflies for a long time and like caterpillars. We need to step out of this safety zone into our like learning and our danger zone in order to grow. The weaving has kind of a lot of juxtaposition within it, things like electrical wires and then it has natural things like bark or rose bush or something like that. Because that was meant to be like the juxtaposition there about prison and safety, but I was worried that was going to get missed. So when I added the, the bars, it looked far more menacing. <laughs> and I chose the bush because the bush is where I felt safe because I, I always spend my whole life there. But then I also put it to this sound, which was, it's, it's like tinnitus. And like when it's quiet, I hear it. So I had that juxtaposition between the safety of the bush and then the horrible sound that I was always hearing. So what I wanted to do before COVID started was I wanted to weave some of it myself, but then I wanted to take the whole loom into school and get people just to come in during lunch and whatever, and I'd be there and get everyone to weave this cocoon. So it was like a really looking at like a social experiment, but COVID hit, so I got my family to do it. So my house kind of became my cocoon. Process is kind of um, different. In short, it's called hands, feet, beat, is how I was taught. And with hands, it's kind of like this. The wool or the bark or the whatever you're putting through it, you, you move it through the, the weaving that's like this and you can move it through like this. So it really creates a texture. And then with feet, you have pedals, like an accelerator and, and a brake. And you just swap each time you move it through the weaving. And then the beat is when you, um, you're pulling down this bar, it's got like teeth in it, and that compresses the weaving, and then you can fold it away. Simple steps, but not easy. I think people get confused between simple and easy. So another thing I was challenging about it is that you can't actually see the work you've done because it's folded away. So you're kind of going from memory as to how it all relates, and if you want it to flow, it's quite challenging. <laughs> doing my folio, I was always playing David Bowie. <laughs> when I hear his stuff, I always get something different out of it. Another one that inspires me would be Alana Stewie, and he does this fantastic work using uh, bottle tops, like beer bottle tops. He like connects them, and then he makes this grand scale golden drapes that hang from the, from the walls and the roofs. He inspires me to keep on thinking and looking around. My number one advice is don't worry if your folio is messy because you're just going to get your brain into your folio and you do that by doing it every night. So I did that every night and it's really focus comes from perseverance is what I've decided. It feels like you're not going anywhere. Like if you haven't written it down, you can't see the progress you've done. So it's really just creating the work makes you feel better about doing the work. Even if it's really crappy work, getting the work in there you can, you can build off it. Making your exploration proposal broad is really important, I think, because your, your brain's gonna take you on unexpected tangents and you want that to be able to happen. <laughs>